everyone, it's Denise Love, and today I have a special little unboxing for us. So Sketchbox reached out because they watch my channel sometimes also. <laughs> How fun is that? Because you know I love Sketchbox. <laughs> and they reached out and asked if I wanted to do a limited edition box with them of all my favorite favorite sketchbook things and I was like heck yeah let's do a Denise Love favorite box so this box of all the goodies I'm going to pull out of here just so you know is going to be limited edition they're going to price these at $48.99 plus shipping the retail value of everything in here is $72.87 so you're going to save $23.88 Plus, she said, if you purchase through my link, which I'll have just below the video, you'll get an extra 10% off. How cool is that? So let's take a look at what I picked of all my favorite stuff. And if you've been on my channel for any length of time, you'll definitely recognize some of these um, that I pull out because I still use them and talk about them in the videos. So not in a sketch box, uh, special box for me because they were pulling it all together for me to do an unboxing. But look at these goodies right here! Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to show you what I picked. So this right here is my very favorite matte graphite pencils and I pull the matte graphite out a lot to do mark making and um, this 14B is the one that I'm always pulling and using and stuff, but the set comes with 2B, 4B, 10B, and 14B, and then also comes with a Pit Pastel um, Soft in white. Um, so this is my very favorite pencils, and it has the number 14B, which is my very favorite in that set. I love the bold marks in there. So you do see me pull that out all the time. And then, you know, I had to include the Zig Acrylic Gold Marker, which you see me use this all the time because this is the same vivid gold as the Kuretake Mica ink that I love so much. And it's convenient because now you don't have to have my um, dip pen and the ink. You can just have this one marker. So we've got that in there for you. <laughs> Also, we have in here a kneaded eraser because I'm always pulling out my kneaded erasers and erasing marks on uh, artwork and it's just good for a variety of mark erasing that maybe you accidentally get on your paper. So we've thrown one of those in. I love it. And you know I love the liquid graphite. So of course, um, we've got us a liquid graphite in there and this is my favorite favorite container um, so I'm using this all the time I've got it right here on my desk and I, I figure after after I empty that container like I'm gonna keep that container to put other stuff in because I love the the top spout on this and you can just use it like right out of the bottle like that so this is definitely a favorite are any of these surprises if you've been on my channel for a while <laughs> also threw in a pencil sharpener for our yummy pencils and I like this one because it's just a basic pencil sharpener with two sizes in it and I keep um, a couple pencil sharpeners just up here on my table also to keep a nice sharp point on the different pencils so we've got that in there and then look at this ha ha we've got the Kuretake graphite watercolors which I have just been obsessed with these since I discovered them. They are amazing and they've got that wonderful kind of graphite-y um, kind of urban kind of feel to it. So we've got five colors that we've got in our favorite box here. We've got graphite red, graphite violet, graphite yellow, graphite green, and graphite brown. So you knew that when I started that had to be where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, and then we've got two more items in here. And I think that's the whole box. Yes. Can you believe how many favorite things I gathered for you guys? Also got a paintbrush in here in case you don't have 
um, a paintbrush that you love. And this is the Filbert one. And I like the Filbert for watercolor and for um, acrylic paint. It does a lot of good stuff. So I've got a paintbrush in there to go with all that. And then my favorite watercolor papers from Sketchbox. So I love the... Um, this little square pad. It is 140 pound hot press uh, watercolor paper and I I'm not even kidding when I tell you I absolutely love it. I bought lots of extras of these because they're wonderful for doing little artworks and for doing like art in a minute kind of things or if you have like a daily project you're working on they're absolutely perfect for that kind of project um, so I'll pull some of my little art in a minutes that I've done on these but I love this paper so we've got one of those in there and then we also have um, 140 pound cold press paper four by six and this is a hundred percent cotton so um, this one is also a hundred percent cotton which is why I just love these papers um, so this has got a beautiful cold press surface on it and we're going to create some yummy artwork with it so we've got two pads of paper in this set for you how amazing is this favorites box so let's play with some of these and just see what we can do with it all right, so I thought we would start by just taking a look at some of the things that I have used the little pad for, and then we will paint some little miniatures in a bit. Um, but these are super fun for like art in a minute, a uh, hundred day project kind of size. They are, um, what size are these? These are four by four, four inches by four inches, or uh, approximately 10 by 10 centimeters so they're such a good size they're perfect for exploring ideas and different art mediums and just coming up with different ideas and little mini projects for the day just to kind of get you sitting at your desk and actually doing some work and not feeling overwhelmed by a great big art project I love this one <laughs> <laughs> so you can see I have definitely leaned into little mini works of art and had oh, this was so pretty and had a real blast experimenting on this tan colored paper I think that's what really attracts me the most is these are so lovely and they're not even on white paper and how often do you you know try out you know colored papers I think I like it better I like how you can just kind of look around and decide which is up and which is down um, and you can see these got that yummy gold on it um, so yeah these I that's why I bought so many extra little pads of this paper because I love it and they're perfect for a little you know two or three minute to five minute little paint sit down they're good for little um, Instagram videos if you do like a little one minute little paint project to share they um, are very handy for that look how pretty that is oh my gosh so you can see I love the tan paper and the size is perfect and you can come up with such great little paint projects on these so I'm excited that you're gonna get to have one of those in my box <laughs> there was one more thing that I picked and she's like that's so popular we've sold out and I'm like oh I knew it <laughs> this is some pieces that I have painted with the um, the watercolors uh, so I just thought I'd pull those out because these are um, a couple of my favorite so this is with the um, red brown kind of uh, the color spectrum here and then this is that other side of the color spectrum with the green and the blue and so I just thought with the gold and the matte pencil in there if you can see the very light pencil lines so I kind of thought we would test out our Kuretake's um, with the four by six paper which i'm getting stuff on i didn't intend to wipe that stuff off um, and just play and see what we can create with two different colorways so i have taped down two different sets of papers here to experiment on so let me open these up and i'll be right back all right i've got these open i'm just going to kind of activate it with a little bit of water and 
just uh, if you ever get something on your paper that little kneaded eraser that's exactly why I wanted one of these in your box because if you get like a little pencil mark or something on the paper like some powder pastel powder or something moved in a direction that you really didn't intend to it um, this is perfect for just going through kind of cleaning up any little spots that you saw on there and that's why I love having these at my art table I have a couple I keep using them you just kind of squish them around when it's got medium on it, it just kind of I don't know it just refreshes it these things last forever <laughs> so I love having those Let's see if I can put those back over there and them not fall okay so I'm kind of wanting to do that lovely kind of abstract I've taped two sets of the white paper down this uh, four by six paper which is approximately 10 by 15 centimeters and that's what I'm going to play on with the two color palettes and I'm kind of feeling like um, we could take one of these pieces of paper and test out our colors so we can see what they look like so let's just give ourselves a little test here maybe add some more water and we can thin that down you can see when you wet these they get a lot of Ooh, look at that color. I may need a second little sample sheet here, but oh, 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 oh so pretty. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so excited just looking at how pretty these are. Oh, they're beautiful. They're smoky. You can tell they've got that little bit of graphite in there. And when they dry, you could take like a spoon, like the back side of a spoon. I usually have one uh, right up here on my desk. I'll have to get it out. Um, but you can take the back side of a spoon and burnish these. Yeah, here we go. I just keep a little plastic spoon up here. Um, once they're dry, you can burnish it. And the areas where it's like real thick, you can get that little metallic shine out of these. Um, so fun stuff. So I'm kind of feeling like for the first piece, I might want this brown, green, and blue. Um, which I know it says it's yellow, but it looks green to me and when it, with the graphite in it. And then the second set, we might do this brown, purple, red, because look how juicy and yummy those colors are. I mean, can you see why they're my favorite? <laughs> and then I've got my pencils over here ready. Oh, just getting another set of those was a happy day. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm going to just do two sets of these in the two colorways, kind of kind of organic here in the way um, that I lay this color down. I'm not trying to be specific, and I do like to do two or three at a time, because if you paint one and you're like, oh, I don't like the way that turned out, or oh, I ruined it, or didn't work out like I thought, then you got two more that you're like, oh, well, I do like the way the second one worked out or this third one worked out. And I kind of kind of gives you a chance to perfect that technique and that as you're going, like the marks you like and where you want to lay that paint down. It gives you the opportunity for that play. And then by the time you, you know, get past the one that you didn't love, you got two others that you're like, oh, look how these worked out. So that is why I like working on more than one. And then if I didn't like any of them, I'm still not unhappy about it. I can always cut them up and make other art out of it or little prompt cards for my little heart jar um, so every day every day can be a good paint day um, if you kind of look at it like okay that might not have been my favorite um, but I can cut it up and I can use it for collage material and I can use it for pretty art prompt cards and I can you know make gift tags out of them and all kinds of things that you can do with pieces um, that you don't love so nothing nothing is wasted look how pretty these are Whoa, so pretty let's do some mark making so these I'm gonna get the 14b that's my favorite <laughs> b b 14b the b means bold um, if you've got the H pencil, like let's say two or three H, H means hard. So bold, and I'm using it kind of light, but bold means dark color. Um, so if we take our sheet here, 
let me do the mark making and then let me talk about it. So hard lead is like almost impossible to get to make a hard line, like a hard bold line, because the lead is super hard. Um, the HB is sits right in the middle and it's more of, see there's 14. Oh, maybe don't do it right on top of our pieces there. There's 10. Here's four, and I'm pressing about the same hardness there with each of these, and you can see as I go, and then we've got the white. Let's see. <gasps> Look at that on top of there. Ha <laughs> ha Okay, so the watercolor definitely has to be dry um, as I break the tip of that, but it does give you a nice white mark there on the top of that, um, but you can see that as it as that number went up it got bolder and bolder and bolder and i don't like the um the less bold pencils but let me see okay this is hb so this is right in the center and you can see pressing just as hard it's still not as bold as any of these other ones and then as you move up that line in the hardness scale to the h's do i have oh here's a 4h <laughs> um, it gets harder and harder to get a bold line so that's a 4h so you can see and if you go up even higher on this hardness scale um, it's just going to be harder and harder and harder you don't get the graininess too as you get with these uh, bold ones um, so these are my favorite and that's what I always pull for and I really like the dark I also like water soluble ones um, because then you can put water on them and move them around. Did I do that right there? Look at that, I sure did. Don't touch the paintings. <laughs> so let's set this one, let's let this one dry. But man, I'm loving that. And that little part at the bottom doesn't even bother me. I can cut it off. But I'm gonna set that right behind us and we're gonna do the other colorway. So I kinda wanna do the brown, green, and blue. Well, yellow. Um, and just see you know, what we can get um, in this collection as we continue going down the colors there oh look at that oh these are just so lovely <gasps> look at that okay so let's just do a little more water here you can thin these out quite a bit because on my original inspiration pieces that we were pulling out and looking at there were some opacity differences and so I want to make sure you know that I kind of explore that too in some of the pieces of art I like the light I like the dark I want there to be some differences look at that and then we could come back in and we could touch some of this color in or we could decide that we just like those two colors so much and we're not going to add to it lots of choices oh i think on this last one maybe we do just want the blue and the green let's get some more water in there this stuff oh so juicy and so it, it activates so wonderfully that you can get all the rain there look at that one oh. okay so i feel like we're gonna let these dry before i do anything else to them so i'm gonna scoot those over to the side we're gonna pull this one back down i'm gonna try to set that precariously over here and I'm going to make sure it's completely dry because now I want to mark on top and I've let that sit long enough that I feel like it's okay if I dry the little bit left. Another thing that this does before I get this one dry um, is we can come back in with the Kuretakis and these bloom out really nice. Like you can see there's some blooming and some yumminess going on over here. So if you want to get some other texture in your pieces um, before that is dry, it reactivates beautifully. So we can come back. It'll do it when it's dry too, but it's not going to be quite the same. Um, but we can come back in here and add some texture and pattern and blooming which I love, just as some additional yummy mark making ideas. So this is just water that I'm tapping back on these to create some additional marks. And we'll do this one on the dry and we can see the difference. Oh, 
let's do this one over here it's dry but we'll get to see what it's doing so because I've done that let's go back to the blue set before they're dry and maybe do a little bit of some mark making some let's just make it do some fun stuff <laughs> look at that look at that just watching it go as you hit the water and it start doing fancy stuff it's like my watercolors are doing tricks <laughs> yeah. i love that so it's fun when it's damp not when it's like sopping wet but when it's still kind of damp then you can see those things kind of spread out and do some tricks for you <laughs> tell my little doggies I, they're little trick dogs too they do little tricks for treats and I feel like I'm getting some little tricks out of my watercolor here <laughs> I love these and I might leave this video up even after these box these boxes are limited edition but they um, the stuff is all still available so even after the box sells out I might leave these up just to um, have these projects on there because it's still my very favorite stuff you can still get this stuff it's just a deal um, while they have it up for me so let's let these dry and I'll be right back so I didn't mark make on this one let's do some mark making real quick because they're not completely dry but I do like mark making sometimes while they're wet because you'll drag some of that color around and you know you can do whatever mark making ends up being your favorite but I like having it even though I'm not doing it like super bold it is in there and as you get closer to pieces you can see the extra details that maybe you don't see from far away and I love that like I love getting in close and then seeing like oh look at this you know fun detail in here that maybe I really didn't see when I was further back and I can still feel this paper is definitely wet so it's gonna mark differently on wet paper than it does on dry paper um, so I find that interesting and even though I'm using the bold pencil I am kind of not doing it super dark so I'm not pressing down um, a terrible a terrible lot there I'm still going pretty soft but I like the option with the bold you can go real dark you can go real light um, okay so now let's let this dry I didn't want to miss out on my little initial initial mark making there all right this sets dry and I was telling you earlier that you could come back and kind of burnish on thicker areas and you might get some of your um, graphite to kind of shine through um, so you just do that by pressing and just kind of rubbing real hard with the spoon and that'll move it around too so you got to be careful that you know as you're going that you're not moving the graphite outside of your piece um, but then as we kind of come back up and it focuses do you see that little bit of a sheen there that we've created by burnishing it and the thicker that watercolor and the drier that watercolor because this is still fairly could still possibly be a tiny bit damp so the drier that color um, the harder it'll be um, so then you can really press down and get that little bit of sheen out of it as it hits the light it'll be like an extra element that you're like Ooh, what is that and it's like that pencil shine like the shine of a graphite pencil is what that little bit of sheen is um, so I love that all right let's take our pencil and maybe come in here and just do some mark making and because it's very dry you can see I'm getting a much uh, darker line as I'm drawing those and that's what makes me so excited about bold pencils and the matte the matte bold the pit graphite matte is not a shiny graphite and I like matte things I don't like shiny paint I don't want my paintings to be really shiny when I'm done um, so if I finish it with like a finishing spray it's going to be one that's a satin or a matte it's not going to be a gloss um, just my own personal preference even in my photography I did a lot of like dark matte kind of toned finishes when I was in Photoshop finishing it I would pull up the black so they looked like they were matte rather than shiny um, and I just like that kind of matte look it's my own preference there some people don't like it at all 
And that's what kind of makes us all different as artists, all the different things that um, we work into our artwork that become preferences of things that maybe not everybody else is going to love, but we love it. So now I'm just going to play and mark make because I love it. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I like the long lines. It's kind of an element that you see as you get closer. I love it. All right, so you know I love the gold and the gold is starts off like a little white tip and you just kind of shake it up and then just kind of pump it till the ink comes down to the tip. It's a nice fine tip. It gives us, there we go, didn't take hardly any at all. See, it's a nice fine tip. It's a beautiful fine line. Um, and I'm going to do my favorite circles <laughs> so that you can see how wonderful um, this pen is. And this this pen right here is my very favorite find in any of the recent things that I've gotten. Um, it's like favorite tool. <laughs> and I like putting little little dots of gold along um, the edges of my lines because it makes it look like little gold pearls kind of and it's almost like it's the little jewelry on your piece. Look how pretty that is. And then, of course, lovely gold dots. Favorite, favorite thing. And then sometimes, rather than just following the color, I like to move outside the piece a little bit as if it kept going. Um, so just some fun things to think about um, as you're creating. Oh, these are so pretty. Look at these. Oh my gosh. And, and then just like, I didn't do it this time, but just like with, you know, painting three, and if there's one that's like your least favorite, use the least favorite one as your practice piece, the piece that you're like, okay, here's where I'm going to try everything that I'm not sure of. And then as I go and I'm like, oh, I love that, then go back into your piece that you love and add the stuff that you loved rather than doing all your testing on your favorite, whichever happened to be the favorite out of the ones that you painted. Look at these. So lovely. Okay, I'm loving that one. So I do like the circles. Let's see. Rawr. pearls and this too you know if you go straight up and down it's a finer um, point than if you go kind of to the side so you can make it make a little bit larger like pearl or or dot or um, design depending on how you're holding that pin um, when you're doing stuff on it and now I don't want to stick my hand in that gold but I don't want to turn it all the way around so I'm going to use my my paint stick that I use as a hand rest and I've just got it lifted up off the the paper so that I'm not resting my hand on the paper and you can get more of the ink to come out by just um, tapping that down and pumping it like an extra time Then on this third piece I might I might do something different and do like little half circles like they came into the piece but it wasn't like a full circle and I might do another little part circle down here just to try something different and then I could still come back with my lovely little pearls oh so pretty so pretty All right, look how lovely these are. And we still have the other ones to finish, but if I pull those up there, look how pretty that shine is on these pieces. Oh my gosh, I love these. Um, and we could also, we could also still use our liquid. I'm gonna use the one that I have that's open. We could still use the liquid um, graphite or we could do some new little pieces on our other paper. I kind of feel like that's what I want to do. Let's save that for a moment. 
Um, these, we're gonna let these dry. Let's pull the other ones back down while we are letting those dry dry. Okay, and let's do some mark making. Here we go, and you see those were really light um, when I initially did those, and you can see now as the paint is like really, really dry, without very much effort at all, I'm getting a much darker line. So that's kind of a kind of interesting there just to observe that as you're going like do you need to make sure it's like really really dry to get the line that you want um, or however you want to handle that oh I do like it I like that a lot I think I'm gonna leave that one with those light little pencil marks this one I did like some lines with a little bit of mark making in between the line, like a little dash or a dot there. I still feel like I'm in Klimt mode from my Gustav Klimt study. Let's go put, <gasps> let's try this white, even though I did um, kind of break that tip. Maybe we will just really quickly use our little sharpener and get us a nice tip and I'll try not to break it. <laughs> put that off in the trash. And then we could come back with a little bit of mark making. I'm going to be careful here to not completely break it. But look at that right on top of the dry watercolor. And this is almost, it feels like a white chalk. Doesn't really say. It's a soft pit pastel in the white. Pit, it's a soft, yeah, it's, it is a pastel. Okay, it's a chalk. So I got that right. It's like using white pastel on tar piece. Um, so a nice fun way to get a little bit of some white into our piece. I like that. It's funny how when you're using a material you're like oh it feels like this other material that I use all the time. I can feel it because it's got like a little bit of a drag on it as you're using it. Like I can feel the resistance of the pastel versus um, like an oil pencil or something that's made of a different material. Like I can feel the difference as I put that pencil to the paper. I can feel that drag difference. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I don't know, I'm loving the darkness over here. I feel like this one's calling out for the gold. Okay, I like that. I like it, where's my gold pen, let's see. All right, so this one feels like it needs the gold, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna get my stick here so I'm not drawing on it. I'm not putting my hand on the, the paper there. But I'm kind of feeling like this one wants some of those half circles because I liked it on that other piece. And I'm trying to end the circle kind of at the edge of the paint rather than stopping short or going further. Um, you just kind of got to eyeball that. And if you do go further, it don't matter. I was just, that was kind of my goal. Like, here's what I'm thinking I want to do, and that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, that is so pretty. Let's do some dots out here. So I do have this lifted. You can see there's a gap there, so I'm not putting my hand or this paint stick down on to the paper. Look how pretty that is. That one, that one's just so pretty like that. Okay, I'm, I'm definitely... Ooh, let's try it. Let's do some little, whoa, let's just come through here like that. Oh, maybe I'll give it a little pump there. Um, yes, and so that was some fun extra different marks. I'm still going to put pearls on it. That's just going to be the thing that I love, little gold dots along the lines. I just think it's pretty. We could come down here with a few more. That'd be fun. All right, lovely. Okay, I think I'm good with this. So I'm gonna let these dry. 
pull this other one back down. They should be dry. And let's peel the tape. And I'm going to be real careful just to make sure. This is artist tape that, I'm, that I tape these down with. I like artist tape and I like painter's tape. And as long as you're careful as you go to pull the tape, it does not tear this paper. You see that? I'm not even being super careful, but I am being careful. But I'm not, and of course now that I've said that I probably will, but look, I'm not tearing the paper, <laughs> which instantly makes this paper a favorite. That's why I like it so much, because it's got a nice surface and it doesn't tear with my tape. <laughs> And you know, I, I've gotten Sketchbox for a very long time now, like years. Um, and they'd send these little pads of paper and I would think, what am I gonna do with that little pad of paper? Now, I love the pads of paper because with all the experimenting that you know I love to do, um, now I don't have to buy big surfaces to figure out what some of these papers are and what they do. And then the ones that I love are the ones that I can then say, okay, here's the paper that I love. Look how pretty these are. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, let's pull this other one down. I don't know if it's dry. Let's just see. Those are so pretty. Oh my gosh, good paint day. Just gonna make sure they're dry. I think they are, but we're gonna make sure. Okay, good paint day. Oh, so pretty. And if you like to make um, washi tape or whatever, or um, like uh, art tape. If you, you save this, if you paint it all over this tape and you could save that and you could put it in your sketchbooks or some other pieces of art. A lot of people love to recycle the tape that way. So instead of just throwing it out, you could recycle it. And it could tape down more pieces of uh, pieces of art. I usually start with fresh when I'm doing a video, but you know if I'm doing it just for myself I might have some tape kind of stuck up to the side on my little cabinet here and then I can just pull it back down and use it again. Um, look how pretty these are. I think this one might be a favorite. Oh my gosh, beautiful. <laughs> All right, so Look at that, oh my gosh. Okay, so pens, let's use one of these real quick. I don't want to, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about those. This stuff is super fun. Um, let's get our little sample sheet out here. And you can see that you can draw with this. Now the thing about this stuff um, is so cool. Actually, now that I've done that, I might do a little bit of paint on here and do this on top. The thing about this stuff is whatever they use as the binder takes a little bit of time for it to dry. So you'll want to be able to do this and set it to the side for a little bit because um, that stuff does take longer to dry, I've noticed. Just a little side fact there that I just happened to notice. Okay, so which is our favorite? Let's go with this blue and green. Oh, now this is hot press paper, so it is a little different than the paper that we were using, which is why I like it, because it's a real pretty smooth surface. Oh, look at that. Already it looks good. All right, we'll have to let that dry. Um, so let me let this dry, and then I'll be, well, let me mark make in there, and then I'll come back on top with the pencil. Oh. Just doing some light lines, kind of dragging that paint around a little bit. So even though it's a bold pencil, that was the 2B, doesn't mean that it has to be sucky when your face bold. So let me let that dry and I'll be right back. All right, I think we're mostly dry. And I'm gonna come back in here with some gold and then do the pencil on top and then I might do another one and then we'll wrap it up, I promise. But how great is this box that I curated. When she said all your favorite stuff, I'm like, oh yes, I have an instant wish list that I'd want in that box. And so I was super excited when she's like, we can do those. I'm like, yay! <laughs> so definitely check out the box if you love working with some of these fun things that I've shown or you wanna just test it out and play because that's a really good deal that they're doing. Um, for us and then it's very limited edition so once they're gone they're gone I'm probably gonna just leave this video up because all the products would still be available in the sketch shop but maybe just not in 
box form for um, for my favorites, but it's all still my favorites. Look how pretty that is. Whoa! Okay, I want to practice a second here, so let's get our little sample sheet back out. Let's kind of get it started. Maybe I've got a little tip. Let me clean the tip off just in case. Okay, oh, oh, definitely feeling that right there. Okay, here we go. <gasps> yes! Exactly what I wanted. <gasps> look at that. Now when we let that dry, look at that. So you can see how gorgeous this is for some mark making. Okay, now I want to do another one, but I don't want to mess this one up. Eek! <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, let's pull this off. Come on, be gentle. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so what if we started out with a pencil? I like the 14. Where's my 14 at? Here we go. <laughs> and then maybe we got some mark making. Maybe we'll do some mark making after. Let's see. Okay. Okay, that's super fun. Look at that. And I almost want to... Um, I'm going to pull out maybe a catalyst wedge and just smear this a little bit. So this is uh, just a master's touch silicone brush, um, but I don't want to do this with a paintbrush. I want it to be that interesting kind of smeared kind of look. So that's why I pulled out the silicone brush here. <gasps> Ooh, ho, ho! Good one! Whoa, now this has turned out to definitely be an excellent paint day. I'm gonna let that dry and I wanna put some gold with it, so I'll be right back. Okay, we're like 98% dry and you can see it's that dry. It really does look like pencil that I was able to get a, a wide, large swath of area covered rather than just a pencil point covered. How cool is that? And then I was playing because I was like, let's just see how good of a dot that I could get with this, you know, great tip that's on here. And these do great dots too. So I just kind of started it over here. But if I wanted to do, I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. But basically, get it started. And then let's go back to this one that I didn't do a whole lot of extra to. Um, we could do yummy dots. Look at that. Okay, I can't wait to pull this closer for you to see. But if you're very careful, you can get such good little dots. Look at that. So definitely got some good dots out of that. So just start it on like a little extra scrap piece of paper. And then you can come back and dot on your piece. Um, so yeah, let's just do um, some mark making here with our gold, cause we love it. And one of my favorite pieces is that one I did that had the gold marks in it. <laughs> I love that piece. Let's just do a big circle. <laughs> it's just going to be one of my signature fun things is the circle. I love the circle for some reason um, on my pieces. And so any chance that I'm like, what do I want to do there? I'm like, yeah, let's stick a circle with some pearls. <laughs> oh, you'll get to some marks too that you'll just wear them out. And that'll just be some of your signature marks that you like. And who cares if you wear them out? It's yours. <laughs> Look at this piece. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This, you guys, all my favorite stuff. Totally made for a great paint day. Okay, so I hope you check out the box that they made just for us of my favorites. Hope you enjoyed exploring my favorites today in this little paint-a-thon that we did. And I can't wait to see if you get some of these things and try them out. 
definitely come back and share those with me. Look how beautiful all our pizzas are. Urgh. So the box is limited edition. When they sell out, they sell out, but the individual items more than likely will still be available. So definitely check the link below and grab one of these before they're gone. You're gonna love them. They're amazing. I've curated such a good little collection of supplies for you. I can't wait to see you next time. All right, bye.